Omicron is a variant of COVID-19 that has over 50 changes in it from the uh, viruses that were circulating before. Delta had, I think, around 10 or so uh, changes. Think about uh, uh, just if, if something changes its shape or changes a small bit of it. Those changes are, um, are, are able to survive because they make the virus more competitive. And these viruses, as all viruses and all life have to do, they have to reproduce or otherwise they become extinct. So every, every living organism seeks to remain alive. Omicron has risen to the top because the changes that happen to occur randomly in its genetic material, RNA, made it much more easy to transmit. The laboratory studies are showing that it is much more able to replicate in the cells of the nose and throat, but less well able to replicate in the cells of the lungs, which is good because that means it seems to not be as virulent. It doesn't cause as severe disease. On the other hand, because it spreads so much easier, some say 17 times more quickly than Delta, that means so many more people are getting infected. So people who are unvaccinated are highly, highly vulnerable to uh, to Omicron. It's, it's sort of as someone said, it's turbocharging through the through the world, really. Um, and it is highly, highly, highly contagious, which is why every family knows someone. Even our family over the holiday, our son, um, we were getting together in, in South Carolina at Hilton Head, and he went to a, a business dinner and ended up on Tuesday not feeling well. He drove with his dad from Atlanta to Hilton Head for five hours in a car, both were masked, and the next morning he tested positive. Fortunately, we knew what to do. We could isolate him. Nobody else in the family um, ended up being positive, but that's just what Omicron does. So this is, this is looking at the new reported cases since the start back in February 2020, and this is when we first shut down, remember? This is last winter about this time in January. The peak was around 300 cases per day. This is January of 2021, right? But look at what, and this was this back in the fall, back in mm -hmm. September. Look at what Omicron has done. I mean, that is just unheard of, right? 738 cases reported in one day, which means there are probably tons more that are just not reported. So this is a different beast. It's a different virus uh, variant that has essentially turbocharged itself to be able to do what viruses need to do to reproduce itself. And that's why it's so hard. The good news, however, is that the hospitalizations are not as high and the deaths certainly are not as high. I think there's another graph that shows this very well. These are just simply graphs that show where we are. Um, the Midwest is in the green. Remember, Michigan was really early on back in November, very much affected by Delta and Omicron. And now we are coming down, but other places, even though it doesn't seem like we're coming down, we're not in the, the peak of this infection. And so what do I mean by that? Here are some pictures from other places where you began to see this high curve going up, uh, but now we're seeming to peak, come to a place where it isn't going up quite so straight. So I hope that that's saying that particularly in some places where it started early, Omicron may be wearing itself to the point that it goes up very high, but it, but it doesn't stay there, fortunately. Uh, and it comes down. And then the other thing I want to point out is that what happens, what, what we're very, very grateful for, and this is something um, that I want you to be sure to get, is that the cases shown here in the US, again, we're at January 12th, and that's that very high steep curve. But look at the hospitalizations, they don't follow that. With Delta, the hospitalizations and the deaths went up mm. at the same rate, but not with Omicron. So what we need to do is try to stay away from this. And if we get it, we need to hunker down, stay isolated, make sure we don't give it to someone else. In South Africa and other places, it went up fast, but once it got there, it came down equally as fast. So it's a, it's a, we're in the midst of a storm, but it isn't gonna last forever. Could you give us some idea about the balance of severity and maybe percentages as, as you understand that? Sure, so there's this misconception that people should not take Omicron seriously. There are folks that say, well, maybe I'm gonna get infected. Let me just go ahead and get infected now. That is not a good idea for several reasons. 
You never know how this virus is going to work in an individual. The best thing you can do is be vaccinated and fully boosted, which means that you have gotten a booster and, and people now down to age 12, even children 12 to 17 can get a boost. So I cannot overemphasize how important it is to be fully vaccinated and have a boost. And what we know is that Omicron is also less, um, less affected by the immune system. So some of those changes that I mentioned help it to evade the immune system better than Delta. And so when you get boosted, you now can move that protection back up a little bit. So it's really important. People who are fully boosted um, may be asymptomatic or they may get a very sore throat and you know, mm -hmm. uh, feel bad and some congestion and some fever, but it's not enough for most people to send them to the ER or to the emergency room. People who are unvaccinated, however, or who have underlying conditions are ending up in the hospitals, which is why our hospitals are, are overwhelmed and understaffed. Even our healthcare workers now um, are out because they, they, they're getting sick as well. And, and you can't work if you're not feeling well. So that's why the CDC changed the guidelines from uh, if you're asymptomatic, uh, stay home for five days, isolate for five days. And then if you have no symptoms, you can mask uh, for the next five days. If you have symptoms, however, you need to stay away from people. You need to be isolated uh, until those symptoms go away. And then five, wear a mask five days after that to be sure you're not spreading it to someone. And that brings up the issue of mask. Um, with Omicron, it's really important to wear a mask, a good quality mask, because again, I'm gonna show you a chart here. Uh, this was done before Omicron. These are numbers from, um, from, the, from a, a group that does environmental studies. And so this is looking at the time it takes for virus, not Omicron, not the supercharged one to spray it if neither person neither the infected person nor the uninfected person are wearing a mask. So 15 to 30 minutes in the presence of someone will get you infected. And that's for the whole day. It could be five minutes, five minutes, five minutes, which is why unfortunately closing schools is really a wise thing to do when the testing levels are at 40%. That's really the only choice I believe they had. Uh, however, if you wear a cloth mask, and you want to be sure it's a multi-layered cloth mask. The uh, gaiters are not very good because the air goes right through them. You can spread that out a little bit. The best thing, however, are the surgical masks worn by both people, which you can be in each other's presence if one of them is infected and the other is not, but both of them are wearing a mask. You see it would take a whole hour or more for any virus to get through those masks. And if you're doing the N95 or the KN95s, which is what my husband and son were, had when they were riding from Atlanta to Hilton Head in a car for five hours, um, there's a, it takes a long time for anything to happen or essentially it doesn't happen. So the quality of the mask and keeping it on when you're in the presence of other people is so important. If you're using a cloth mask, make sure that it's a multi-layered cloth mask. It's a good idea also to put a surgical mask underneath a cloth mask because that preserves the surgical mask a little bit longer and allows you to use the outside cloth mask so you can wash that more easily and you get more protection from both of them. So Omicron is very tenacious. For unvaccinated people, uh, Jametta, it puts them in the hospital. And if we look now, 98% of the people in the hospitals have Omicron and still a great percentage of those are unvaccinated. We also know that children under five, as, as I think someone said earlier, cannot get vaccinated. So all of us have to protect those uh, people who are vulnerable for whatever reasons, particularly our younger children, because they, keep, they don't have any choice. The sooner we can get these levels down, the safer everyone is. How long are people contagious for? So the answer to that is it really depends on how much virus you get exposed to and how, how much you're making. So that can vary with people. But in general, anywhere from two days post-exposure with a peak at around 
four, five, six days after the exposures when people are most contagious, they're putting out most virus, that's when they need to be isolated. And that means in a room someplace away from other people. Um, and also that's when you're likely to see, to see symptoms, but a person does not have to have symptoms to be contagious. That's the other piece. There are a lot of asymptomatic people that are, that are putting virus out, which is why this 40% <laughs> positive cases that we see in the school system is happening. Um, and so once the symptoms go away, if you have them or somewhere around the fifth or sixth or seventh day, uh, people typically are producing less virus. That still means you can transmit virus because there's still some virus there. Usually the home test will also show up a positive if they're gonna be positive on the fourth or fifth day. So if you test too early, you'll miss it, right? With the home test. Four or five or six days is when people are most likely to show positive, even though they've probably been putting out virus since the second or third day. So most contagious, I guess, I hope I'm answering your question somewhere between the third and the sixth day. And after that though, still masks so that if you are putting out virus, you're not getting other people infected because then the cycle just keeps going. If someone is positive and returns to work after five days of isolation, will they bring the virus to the workplace and spread it? And so I think this is really getting at this change from five day, the five day to 10 day guidelines. And I heard you say, if you have symptoms, you shouldn't be going back around people because you're contagious. Um, but could you, could, could you um, answer that question? The CDC guidelines were changed, but many people are running past what they were changed to. They are five days isolation if you test positive and have no symptoms plus then five days of masking of KN95 or double masking with a surgical and a cloth mask for an additional five days. So if you go back to work, that means you must be masked the whole time. And that was done such that we can have folks who are feeling better or who maybe didn't feel bad because they were asymptomatic in the first place, but tested positive to now be able to put on a mask, keep any virus they're making inside that mask and help with the personnel shortage that we have due to the high levels of COVID. The other rule is if you are showing symptoms, if you have a sore throat, a runny nose, a headache or fever or whatever, then you stay home as long as you have those symptoms and you continue to isolate until those symptoms are completely gone. Then you add the five days of masking after that. So if it takes me eight days before my headache and my symptoms are gone, then I'm still going to add five days of masking to that time before I am likely not able to spread virus to someone else. So what we keep hearing, you know, people hear five days isolation, you can go back to work. Well, that's only if you're asymptomatic and also requires that you are very diligent about wearing a mask to make sure that no virus you're making is being given to other people because that just keeps the cycle going on and on and on. You can find more at OneDetroitPBS.org or subscribe to our social media channels and sign up for our One Detroit newsletter. <laughs>